Hello everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on page two of Catch of the Day. And um, I've got my papers laid out here and hopefully I've got everything trimmed right. This is very similar to a page that I've designed in a previous album, although I made a change to the pocket on here because in, in reflecting on how I designed the other pocket, I wasn't really crazy about it. So it is very similar to a page that was in ocean blue. And we have two flaps. And of course, this is page one. So this is the spine side. This is the outside of the book. So you want to have your tall um, flap on the outside. In this case, it is the right hand side. And this flap is four by eight. And you're going to score a half inch on the four inch side. Hope everybody's doing well. We've had some crazy weather this week. We had rain, and I, I don't mean misting, I mean rain, which is rare here. And then uh, two days later, it was 90 degrees. And then two days after that, it was 65 degrees. <laughs> That's pretty bizarre, all in, all in one week. Okay, so enough about the weather forecast, or past cast. <laughs> So the next flap is going to be four and a half by six, and it's going to get installed on the left hand or spine side of the page. And we're going to center it. So I, I did not do this. I am going to quickly locate my, my center line, which because this is eight, is going to be at four. And I'll put a quick mark. And then this is six inches, so it's going to be, the center line is going to be three. Okay, and then all I have to do is line up those two dots, and then this is going to be centered. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can better see what I'm doing. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do before we move on is go ahead and erase that little mark because it actually is going to stick out of the margin. Okay, so we've got our right flap, four by eight, score half inch on the four inch side. Our left flap, four and a half by six, score half inch on the four and a half inch side. Okay, so the next piece, let's set this aside for a second. The next piece is a pocket that we're going to install on the flap. Now, in the original design, uh, I just took a flat panel and scored it at three and a half and then glued the sides down, but I'm not a big fan of that because when you glue the sides down, it actually takes up some of the width of the pocket. So this time I went ahead and put these flanges. So the way I did this, I'll pull in my scoreboard real quick. So first of all, you're going to start with an eight and a half by eight. So it's eight and a half this way, and then you're going to score at three and a half. Then you're going to turn it, rotate it. 45 degrees, score a half inch here, and then score a half inch at seven and a half. So that's gonna take up an inch, so it's gonna be seven inches when you're finished. Now that score line traveled down the full length of this paper, but I used my scissors to manually trim the five inch side of it so that once I tuck my flanges in, there, I don't have to worry about anything being exposed. And now I have a pocket that goes the full width of the paper. So let's go over that one more time. So I started with eight and a half and I scored, that's upside down, eight and a half and then I scored at three and a half. Then I rotated at 45 degrees and scored and then rotated 180 degrees and scored. Then I've got these two flan these two flanges that go the full length. I trimmed what turns out to be the five inch side, the taller part of the pocket. I trimmed those flanges off and then I'm just gonna tuck these in and put them down and then we're gonna have our pocket. And then once we do that, I'll show you how we're installing it. Okay, so that's it, so there's our pocket. Now I'm gonna pull the page back in. Now on the tall flap, 
which is on the outside edge of the book, not toward the spine, but toward the outside edge of the book, we're going to apply this pocket, like about so. And I think I'm putting it on the right way. Yes, I am. And then I'm going to out also add a matted ephemera card right on top of the pocket centered. And then we're only going to glue down and we're going to leave this last bit open so that we can put an insert in here when we're all done. So go ahead and select uh, the 4x6 ephemera card of your choice. Uh, this is the one I'm using. And then look, you'll see once we lay it down, it's going to be perfectly matted. Now I'm not going to lay it down right now. And I've done this on a couple of pages because I want to get my designer paper on first, then I want to add it. Okay. And I think I'm doing this right, but I got to go back and look at something. So um, I'll be back in just a second. I want to make sure I've got this laid out right. And then also the same thing for the pocket. I don't want to apply it to the flap until I put my decorator paper down. So you'll take your pocket and your ephemera card and just preserve them till you're ready to do the rest of the decorating. Then we'll add those on top. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are decorating page one. So I think I've got everything trimmed out and inked, but of course, if you follow me at all, you know that sometimes I think I'm ahead of the game and turns out I'm not. So I have selected my papers and I wanna go over um, uh, what we're doing on the inside and I'm going to share with you these are going to go like so what um, actually yeah what uh, where these papers came from so this is from the 8x8 collection it's the anchor paper and um, this is from the patterns and solids and honestly I got to rethink where this came from I think the stripes are from the patterns and solids. How do I know that? Nope, it's from the collection pack. Um, it's from the collection pack, not from the patterns and solids. So there you go. So 12 by 12 collection pack. Um, what I do to help me keep track of that, and I'll, I don't do that great of a job. When I open up my patterns and solids, I trim the tops off. And so when I'm going back and forth looking at my papers, I know if the top is trimmed off, the 12 by 12, that little uh, cream strip if that's trimmed off then I know it's actually coming from the patterns and solids and if it's not trimmed off then I know it's coming from the collection pack okay so that's enough about that and it might help you stay organized too one of the reasons I do that is the patterns and solids comes in a pad that's bound with glue and it the glue is very sticky and so once you take it out of the pack it has this trace of glue on it and if another piece uh, gets laid on top of it it'll actually pull the print up off your paper. So I trim those off right away. The collection pack uh, just comes in a sleeve and they're not, uh, and they're, they're loose sheets. So I don't have to worry about glue getting on uh, another page. <clears throat> and that glue, let me make sure I've got this going the right way. Uh, yeah, wait a second. <clears throat> this is page one. Page two. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm just double checking. I want to make sure my mechanisms are all opening the way I, I had planned. Because this page would be easy to flip upside down and not really notice the difference. But the page two, I want it to open away from the spine, so it matters. Okay, again, eight by eight. 12 by 12, <laughs> and I think this is patterns and solids, but I'm gonna double check. I can't remember. Yeah, this is patterns and solids. Let's double check or dry fit. Oh, see, you guys, I didn't get it all trimmed. Let's go ahead and lay this one down because I know this is trimmed. <clears throat> and it's going to be, I'm gonna run out of glue. Hopefully not before we're finished with page one. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, now this needs to be trimmed a little. Okay, that now should be, I keep bumping my elbow. I adjusted my seat and it's clearly not in the right spot because every time I turn to trim, I knock my elbow. Double check and make sure I'm actually recording, and I am. Hope everybody's doing well. We had another beautiful day here in San Diego. This is directional, so pay attention to your fish and make sure um, that top fin is up. Oh, shoot, I for no, I'm okay. I was gonna say I forgot to do my magnets, but they're actually going on here. <laughs> that was a panic if you didn't notice. <laughs> so let's go ahead, this is the pocket that's gonna go right here. Let's go ahead and figure out what we're doing here. So my plan is, do I have that right? Yeah, to lay this down, install this pocket, and place a magnet on the back of this on the top of this. So we want to make sure we don't cover this flap, but we are good to go on this one. And then once I get this in, I can put the pocket in and then I know that um, my magnet placement will be right. And in a minute, I'll double check the, this is from the patterns and solids. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and decorate the pocket page before I install it. So I've got a, a strip that's gonna go right here. And I trimmed mine out to one and three quarters, but you can do wh whatever you like. I just wanna make sure there's enough to slightly tuck into the pocket so that whatever I put in the pocket just can move freely and not get hung up on the lip of the paper. So it should slip right into, and I left the leading edge glue free so I can push it in and pull it back out without leaving a trail of glue. And I talk about that pretty much in every video that I have a pocket in, but it's always a good reminder. Occasionally I forget to do it and cover the whole back in glue. And that's okay too. You just, if you do that, you just need to make sure that the top of your pocket does not fall on any glue trail that you left until it's totally dry. Okay, this is directional too, so you want to make sure your print is going the right direction. I'm just dry fitting it one more time. Looks good. So the last thing we're gonna do on this is add a matted ephemera card. This is the one I chose. And we're only gonna glue from this side down. And I'm just making sure I have an even border all the way around. And I'm not gonna measure it, I'm gonna eyeball it. I just want it to look straight. So now I'm gonna turn it over backwards, center it, and then I know where to, to put my glue line. Right there. high there we go still too high okay I'm happy with it 
Okay, so now we're ready to install it. So what I'm looking for is an even border around these three sides. And I'm going to glue the three sides. I'm not gonna glue across the middle because when you open it up, I want this to be a pocket. <clears throat> so all I'm gonna do is go around the three sides. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So if you turn it over to figure out where your glue goes, don't turn it over this way because you'll put the glue line in the, in the wrong place. Turn it over this way so that when you flip it back, it's, it's gonna be right. It only matters if this isn't centered and it won't be centered, it's gonna be slightly off. Not much, but a little bit. Okay, and then once we place this, then we can get our magnets down. Okay. It's actually kind of easier to see if you've got an even border when you have, don't have to look at all the patterns. So again, we're just going to go around the edge. want to put a magnet here. <clears throat> Just drawing a little cheat line so I know where the magnet's going to fall. What is it sticking to? Oh, there's a magnet on the other side. Okay. I think that looks good. We'll do that and see. We'll go ahead and check and uh, verify that it's up here. You could have also placed your magnet here before we added this. No, you can't because this flap doesn't reach. So you really need to put it up here. Now, now that we have this down, we can add this piece of paper. Just burnish that into place. It just makes it easier to take the backing off. And, and take out any air pockets around, um, excessive air pockets around the magnet. <clears throat> oh, nope, this is what I designed, the stripe. I'll tuck something in this pocket, probably another ephemera card. You have to be careful because this is a pocket. Normally my rule of thumb is not to put a magnet here because as you stuff things in the pocket, you lose the attraction between the two magnets, but I'm just gonna put a simple single-sided photo mat in there so we shouldn't have a problem or even an ephemera card without um, cardstock on it, just a, a card so that you can use both sides. And it's it's gonna fit perfectly because it was designed around this, okay? And we're also gonna place something in this pocket. So you've got two pockets and then these flaps. 
and I need to find a quick piece of paper that's gonna work here. So I'm gonna go through my scraps really quick and see, ideally I'd like a, a the anchor. So hold on just a second, I'll be right back. Okay, um, I just went ahead and got my second eight by eight and trimmed off a piece. And I just measured it to, to fit. And it's just slightly over two inches. And that's just how it turned out based on the location of this panel. But for planning purposes, you're looking for a, a two by seven uh, piece of paper if, you, if you're not doing it exactly this way. Yep, I'm just about out, but I refuse to change bottles until I get this page done because we're so close. Sorry about that. I should stop turning it upright because it takes too long for the glue to come back down. Maybe I am, maybe it's official. I guess it is. I hate to do this, but we're so close. I'm not going to clean my tip. I'm gonna just go ahead and finish this. Um, I don't worry about cleaning my tip later. Normally when I change bottles, that's my cue to change or to clean my tip. So I might do that between pages. There we go. Whenever I change a bottle, it's amazing to me how much thinner the glue feels because after having especially a four or an eight ounce bottle, the, you have the bottle for a long time. So the glue just gets thicker over time. Okay, make sure you're consistent with your pattern across from it. Okay, that looks good. Mala came to visit us. Okay. Okay, when I'm all done, I just want to make sure that this is still open, and it is. And so that I don't forget about it, I'm going to go ahead and tuck this in here, and then I'll come back later and decide what I want for the insert. But as you can see, it still has plenty of traction when you do a single side. It may be, I may even be able to cardstock back it. I just like that because it's more rigid. Um, the downside. Yeah, it still works. The downside is you don't get to utilize both sides of the postcard for journaling or ephemera card. Okay, that's it for page one, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. And again, I'm going to make an insert here too. Not sure what it's going to look like. It's probably going to be relatively simple. And it's likely to pull in one of the patterns I've already used. But you'll see that a little bit later on. Okay, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. Be back soon. And we'll work on page two.